There's a guy named Kamal Salim, and he gives speeches to right-wing groups and government groups, etc., claiming that he is an ex-terrorist. But thank God he's found the way, he's found the light, and he goes and speaks to these groups, like the Values Voter Summit that just happened. He spoke there. Here, let me give you a sample of what he said. Here, let's go to clip one. My grandfather came from the Ottoman Empire when it fell in 1924 as a general. He earned his scars by the sword of Islam. And when he had my mom, I was born to a Muslim mother who is Zalat. I was trained, and she told me from my childhood, my son, you will die for the sake of Allah. And when you kill Jews and Christians, Allah will celebrate your glory and your hands will light up before the throne of Allah. I was a young lad. I dreamt about killing Jews and Christians. This is my dream as a child. Mm, that is a powerful story. And it got the crowd revved up. They were, look at this ex-terrorist. You see that? We knew it. We knew all these Muslims were trained at birth to kill Christians and Jews. In fact, he also said, I came to destroy this country as a terrorist. Funny that the FBI hasn't talked to him. But anyway, he's had speaking engagements in not just the Values Voter Summit, but at the state capitals throughout the country, at the Air Force Academy, and at colleges and churches all across the country. And he has an amazing tale to tell. Do you know that he says he's worked for Yasser Arafat, the PLO, Muammar Gaddafi, Saddam Hussein, and the Mujahideen in Afghanistan. And by the way, as you're about to see here in clip number two, he was also indoctrinated by the Muslim Brotherhood. We came, I was recruited in the mosque at young age as many children start attending the mosque in the neighborhood by the Muslim Brotherhood. The Muslim Brotherhood came to history in 1928. I was indoctrinated by them in the mosque. That was my college study. We were taught how to infiltrate civilization and become part of nations and change the nations from inside. How to marry your daughters and obtain the citizenship. How to join your military and become member of your military so we can get the citizenship. How to become chaplain and spy on this nation and give it to our brotherhood. And how to become part of this world and come across the borders to infiltrate your very civilization today. This is in a nutshell. So Kansas City Star sees this and they're like, wait, 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 let me get this right. Muslim Brotherhood, Arafat, Gaddafi, Saddam Hussein, is there anybody you didn't mention? And they called him, quote, the Forrest Gump of the Middle East. <laughs> So now this guy it continues with his amazing tales. In fact, he's got one that involves curious sounds and a sad story about a young man uh, that got killed and how proud his mom was that he was killed. Because, you know, it's all Muslims. It's in their culture. That's the story he's really trying to bring to these right-wing voters. Watch. My first master was Yasser Arafat. My first mission was very, very good. You see, the Jews didn't think that children can do such a thing. We took advantage of them. The second journey, I was eight, I was a recruiter. I recruited my next door neighbor, Muhammad. And I told his mom, I'll bring him back home alive. I made a promise. But that day it was, they were waiting for us. This is when the blood of children and blood of lamb was mixed together as we we're trying to rendezvous with the shepherd so they can put these belts on the, top, on the belly of the sheep and take them inside Israel to give them to Fida'iyin, which is the martyrs. That day, they shot us with everything. Muhammad took shrapnel through his esophagus and he fell down to the ground. I carried him and I'm crying, how am I going to tell his mom? And I was crying, mama. That day, Muhammad went a different place. You see, when his mom talked to me, she said, where is Muhammad? You promised he'll be back. I said, he is with Allah. He's celebrating in the host of heaven. Now you can go to paradise without judgment because he became a forgiven like a Messiah to you. And I said, now he's being wed by Allah with 72 versions. And with every version, he has 72 other versions. Muhammad is in good place, Fatima. She put her hand to her lips and shouted with a shout of wedding feast. La, 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 she celebrated her son's wedding into the heavens. 
This guy is a colorful character, man. And he's giving them the show that they want. Oh, yeah, Muslims with their weird little calls and stuff. And yeah, they were so ecstatic when their kid died. By the way, this guy also sounds like Father Sarducci from Saturday Night Live. And then you need two or three miracles. And I tell her, your son has a 72 of virgins. But why would a mom care about that? <laughs> okay, so if you notice, he said in his second mission he was eight years old. According to his accounts, in his first mission when he was running the guns on the sheeps, I'm not kidding, that's what he says, he was seven years old. <laughs> Who would be so colossally stupid as to believe this? Well, of course, not the authorities. In 2007, for example, in Chino Hills, California, he said that Muslim agents had broken into his Holiday Inn and ransacked the place. Oh, the Muslim Brotherhood's on his tail. When the uh, cops were asked about it, quote, local law enforcement, however, has no record of any such incident. Yeah. Fail. And then in 2007, again, he's speaking at uh, Michigan's Calvin College. Another professor, Doug Howard, professor of Middle Eastern history, notices that he's saying really weird things. And in the middle of his speech, he says that he was a descendant of, quote, the Grand Wazir of Islam. Here's the only problem. There is no such thing. <laughs> That's an awesome fail. He just made it up. He's like, it sounds kind of like wizard, you know? And other things. Oh, la, 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 la. I, the Grand Wazir of Islam. And Doug Howard's like, wait a minute, there's no such thing. What the hell's going on here? This guy is unreal. So, in fact, literally, it turns out his real name is Kodor Shami. That Kalam name, he just made it up. It's Kodor Shami. And in fact, who did he work for for 10 years before we, he came out as an ex-terrorist? Pat Robertson's Christian Broadcasting Network and James Dobson's Focus on the Family. Hmm. <laughs> Gee, I wonder where he got all these ideas. Can't quite tell. Come on, come on. <laughs> Even though that's not actually his name. Yeah. All right. Now, uh... He says that he speaks at the FBI all the time and the FBI is communicating because people say, hey, wait a minute, my God, if you were this mastermind terrorist, why isn't the FBI talking to you? Well, he said, oh, yeah, all the time. So they asked uh, FBI spokesperson Kathleen Wright. She said, quote, no information that Kamal Salim has spoken at an FBI-sponsored event. Cannot say definitively whether the Bureau had ever been in contact with him. And I love this line by Dawood Wali. He's the uh, one of the guys from the Council on American Islamic Relations, obviously they realize that this guy's a scam artist. He said, quote, the FBI or the Department of Homeland Security, don't let people who are terrorists into the country and not detain them just because they claim they got the Holy Ghost. 